Hey guys, Woodruff here. I um, just want to do a quick correction. Um, you know, as time moves on, as textbooks change, um, you know, sometimes some of my videos are going to get a little outdated, but instead of having to remake an entire video, um, I do highly recommend watching these corrections because again, sometimes things change or, you know, I do the best of my knowledge and my understanding of things, but um, I learn new things all the time. So just know that um, these corrections are out there. This is a part of being in nursing and the hard thing about being an educator is there's so much gray. So, but um, just some corrections for a few things under the respiratory system. Um, so first, um, the new textbook that we're using now says that um, it used to say, like very succinctly, albuterol first, like always, you always use albuterol before steroids, um, you know, for all disorders. And it's st that still rings true. Albuterol is a rescue medication. So we're going to use this um, usually as like the first line treatment. It helps to open things up. Um, but for some you know, I guess new research things that are coming out for some reason, the new textbook really is trying to hit home um, that albuterol is not necessarily the first line anymore and that a lot of times steroids are um, used um, specifically with asthma um, as a first line. Now, of course, as much as I'm saying that there's like actual paragraphs where it says like, hey, albuterol is not first anymore, use steroids. Um, but then in other places in the same textbook, same section in asthma, it says that steroids are not a first line treatment. So I don't know, it's very confusing. So here's the thing I want to bring up is, is that um, overall, like I might have had some questions in the past or I'm um, really hit home like, oh, my God, it has to be, um, you know, albuterol first. Um, and for a lot of things that will be, um, what do you call it, that we're going to use albuterol first. Um, but um, as a whole, because there's kind of this like mixed literature and stuff like that, we really can't test you over and say steroids versus albuterol. Now we could give you um, albuterol and some other choices and say which one to do first and albuterol probably would be a good choice, but we can't really give you albuterol and steroids and say which one first. And this goes for a lot of disease processes too. Um, now you might still have some EAQs and other questions that say albuterol first and that's fine. Um, NCLEX wise, um, they may still be saying albuterol all first, but did just want to let you know about this change that in other words, really what I'm trying to get at is we can't test you over albuterol versus steroids because I mean, steroids might come first, albuterol might come first, or maybe really they're going to be given simultaneously or back to back and things like that. It's not one over the other one that's going to make all of the difference. They're, um, you know, kind of symbiotically working together. Um, and that's specifically in reference to as for asthma patients. Um, but just kind of know that, um, you know, um, I, I don't want you to get confused, but if you hear other things before and it's like, oh, I'm going to listen to this. She said this three times and she's creating a rule like, you know, um, you shouldn't be in a scenario where you have to get confused about this. Because again, now that this change has occurred in your book, we're probably not going to test you the same over it, obviously but I, I'm speaking for at my school, but I just always like you to be aware that, you know, these things change. Like as time goes on, there's some mainstays in treatment, but as time goes on, they're finding that, you know, other things might be more effective. Um, so yeah, but just know as a whole with asthma, what's the issue? The airway's closed. So we do need albuterol to open things up. Steroids decrease that inflammatory response, decrease um, locally, and then also stop you from reacting so much. Um, and then we're going to do other meds like the oral meds that decrease how much you're reacting and things like that. Um, and possibly things like um, the inhaled anticholinergics and um, things like that possibly as well. Um, the other clarification that I wanted to make is, is that the most recent textbook updated to for decongestants, it used to be that we wanted to use them no more than three days. Now, um, I swear, I, re I read this textbook when I update my PowerPoints, I do it with a fine tooth comb, but things get missed. Um, so a lot of my previous PowerPoints have said that decongestants, it still says decongestants no more than three days, but it's actually five days. Um, and then you also don't want to take them more than three to four times a day. Um, and so, um, you know, just kind of an update there on the, the, those numbers. So, um, you know, uh, it used to be that we could only take decongestants for three days. Now the textbooks are saying five. So just kind of keep up to date with some of this information. These might seem like minor points, but um, it could make a big difference for you on an exam. So just want to kind of help you um, to think about um, these changes and stuff that you also might see out in practice. That's all I got for this one. I'll see you guys for the next one.